If any of you have started working with the uh, digital publishing suite and InDesign CS55, let's say, to create content digital magazines for iPad and other devices, well, I'm going to start showing some tips on that because there's a lot of really cool things we can do. One of the tips I'm going to show you is how to create something like a pop-up menu or a, a pop-up rather that you can click on something and have it show as more information for that object. So here I am in InDesign CS 5.5 and what I'd like to do is open up a panel that allows me to preview this by using the digital publishing suite. So if I come under the window menu and go to extensions, I'll see we have the folio builder which allows us to basically build the folios as it says and the overlay creator panel. I'm going to click on that. I love this panel. This is where we get the interactivity. This is how we add the cool stuff. But this is also how we can preview in the uh, Adobe Content Viewer to kind of test out and see what it's going to look like on something like an iPad. So I'm going to show you how I, the, the final product here of what I've got, and then I'll show you how I built it. So I'll come to the Overlay Creator panel and click on Preview. That should open up the Adobe Content Viewer, and I've got a little crunch here on screen size, but if I come to the logo down here and click, you can see that cool little pop-up. This could have anything. I've seen digital magazines where there's like recipes and all sorts of stuff. I can click on, on the red X and have it hide. All right, let me close up this content viewer and go back and I'll show you how I built it. Now it's a little sneaky and I learned this online uh, by looking at some of the tutorials and things like that. Uh, also, as it stands right now, we can't really have a rollover show this kind of content. I was kind of surprised by that, but that's just the nature of the beast. So. All right, let me go down to my second page here, which just has the starting point. Now, if we want to build this, what we're going to do is we're going to have a trigger object, something that's, uh, I don't know, could be text, it could be a picture, it could be whatever you want. And then we have something that's going to show. And that's what this is. Now, instead of me creating a bunch of objects and grouping them, what I did was I created a single Illustrator file. This is an AI file with some transparency and a little translucency and, you know, a little drop shadow and some cool stuff. And that way I just place that and that's going to be my tooltip. Just trying to keep it simple. Well, what I consider simple. <laughs> All right, let me take the overlay creator panel and I'll pull it off to the side down here. How we're going to build this is we're going to use what's called the object states panel. So make sure you guys see this by going up to the interactive workspace up top. Come to the object states and what we're going to do is we're going to create two versions of this. We're going to create one with just the logo and then one with both of these together, grouped together. So what I want to do is this. I'm going to take this trigger object, the logo. I'm going to copy it, and I'm just going to basically paste it in place right up top. Okay. Now you'll see if I move it off to the side that we actually have two now. Now what I want to do is take these two and group them together. This is going to seem really odd, you guys. I know it is, but I'm going to group these by going to Object Group. And then what I want to do is make sure that these two are back on top of each other. Now, I, I normally would not move these off each other, okay? As a matter of fact, let me do this, you guys. Make it easy. I'll delete that. Click on the group. Click again if you want. You can get in there and grab that. So I'll copy that. Get out of the group by double-clicking or hit Escape. Edit. Paste in place, and it'll put it right on top. Now, once again, you can see. I'll undo. Select both of those, the group and the single. Go to the Object States panel and click the little page icon here. What that does is it creates a state one and a state two. Now this is a just tricky, you guys. It's just being tricky, that's all it is. Now unfortunately we can't add buttons directly to this, so what we're gonna do is this. I'm gonna take this entire thing, okay? We're gonna take this thing, drag it down onto the page somewhere, and you guys, it says state one and state two. These are, it's basically one object. You just have different states to it. It's sort of like a, a rollover state and a knot, kind of. So here's what we do then. I'll create a box. I'll go to the rectangle frame, create a box to cover over the aqua here. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn that into a button. So we're, we're totally faking this, you guys. So I'll take that box. I'll go over to the buttons panel with it selected. I'll come over and I'll say, okay, let's make it a button. I'll then add an action to it. Click on the plus and we'll choose go to state. Now, you can't, you guys, we cannot, like I said, you can't do rollover or anything like that. You'll try it and it won't work. So we have to make it on release. Go to state. When somebody clicks, what I want to have happen here is I want to have it say, okay, go to state two. Awesome. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put a little X out here. Okay, so first and foremost, you guys, what I want to do is this. I'm going to click on the big object here, the big one. 
go to object states and make sure that we have state one here. That's what we're going to see in the beginning initially, essentially, but I'm going to click back on state two. I want to add a little X here. I forgot to do that. So I'm going to show you guys a nice little tip. That's why I did it this way, <laughs> honestly. All right, I'm going to go ahead and place a little X that I drew. And you guys could just literally make an X right now if you want to, but I created a little X and uh, all that stuff uh, in Illustrator just to make it simple. And I called it close. So I'll place a little Illustrator file, call it close. And it's a little too gargantuan, so I'll make it a little smaller. Now what I want to do is I want to put that inside of this weird object state thing. So what I'm going to do is we're going to cut this. I'll copy that or cut it. Click on the object state object. And you guys are going to see that we have a bunch of buttons down here. But you're going to see one that says paste copied objects into selected state. So I'll paste it there. It pasted it into that state only. I'll move it up. There we go. And then I'll click on state one to take a look at it. And you guys will see state one, state two. It shows up only when state two is there. Now we're going to make a button to go on top of that. So I'll go to the box over here, the rectangle frame tool, click and drag, make it as small as you can to cover it up. Make a brand new button, just like we did. We could have copied the other one, but I could make it a button or click on the plus. I'll just click on the plus, go to state, and we'll just make sure it says state one. And there we go. Let me test it out. So to test it out, I want to make sure I go to the overlay creator panel. Now, unfortunately, guys, what's going to happen here is it's going to say it's going to take me to the first page. So I got to click preview. This is the second page of my documents. What I need to do is kind of flick through here and get to the second page. I will click show. There we go. Click go away. Awesome. Think of the possibilities there. There's a lot of things you guys can do. And that's just one example of a way that you can utilize just simple things like object states and buttons to be able to get your magazine to look the best it can.